Welcome to today's Flavorflow 3 design tutorial. Today we're going to have a look at designing fire systems. To design fire systems in Flavorflow 3, we follow the same principles as we do for any other fluid system. We define the boundaries, we size the pipes, and we select some line equipment. However, there are some components specific to a fire system. To demonstrate the first of these, we're going to look at designing a simple fire sprinkler system. On the flow sheet here, you can see I've put a known pressure boundary to model our inlet supply tank, and we'll set that at atmospheric pressure. to model the fact that the tank is open to air. I'm now going to place some sprinkler boundaries on the flow sheet and they're selected from the component palette in the boundaries tab up above. Sprinklers can be defined from the, within the database and they can be found here. Under the boundaries section we can see our sprinklers and if we select any of these sprinklers we can see how they're defined. We can specify the name and the manufacturer uh, of, of the component. We can also specify the nominal size and minimum and maximum operating pressures. The, fr the friction loss characteristics can be defined by the nominal K value which is a K value typically provided by manufacturers uh, which uh, is based on the r relationship as flow is equal to K times the square root of the delta P or we can enter table we can enter table values for flow against pressure loss to provide a curve so once the boundaries are on the flow sheet we can look at joining them using pipe elements they can begin again be found in the component library we select it from the component library and click on the inlet to start the run and click over here to finish the run you can see by default that fluid flow 3 has placed an open pipe node on on the at the end of the pipe I can simply click on that and run another pipe and automatically it will update to show an elbow. And as we go through the system and connect our sprinklers to the pipe work, we'll see that Fluid Flow will put in the uh, appropriate fitting. I'm now also going to place an auto booster in the, uh, in the inlet line so we can specify exactly what, what flow we require into our system. So in this case we're going to put in 90 US gallons per minute. Uh, and I'm just going to size some of the pipes. So initially we're going to leave the, the, a lot, these pipes at 2 inch. We'll specify a difference between each sprinkler of 30 foot. And we're just going to make these pipes very short. Let's make them 0.2 and let's size them as a half inch. So each takeoff will, will be a, a half inch. And I'm going to just select all my sprinklers and you can see by holding down the shift key I can multi-select components and it allows me to change the uh, the properties of, of multiple components at the same time. I click here to open up our uh, our sprinkler database in this case we've got a half inch pipe so I'm going to leave it at the at this uh, this reliable model um, which is a half inch MPT. I'm just going to show some of the properties on the flow sheet so let's show the uh, the flow at each each element And for our uh, auto booster, I'm just going to show the duty flow and the duty pressure rise required for this system. I'm just going to change the size of this this pipe and it, it, um, to to try and uh, balance the flow distribution. So I'm just going to set this to one and a half inches. And let's also have a look at the friction loss across these uh, these sprinklers. So specify friction loss. Uh, and also specify the uh, the. Uh, well, let's have a look at the uh, static pressure as it gets to those to those sprinklers. Let me just move these guys over to the left so we can see them. And let's calculate. Okay, so you can see that now the software is calculated. We have a single error here, uh, and that's that the ideal chick T relationship is outside the allowable range. What that means is that the the difference in diameter between the uh, the branch pipe here and, and the and the channel is is outside of the empirical data that was provided by Idlechick. Uh, an easy way around that is to change it to the crane model. Uh, before we do that, if we check our results, we can have a look at the K, the K values. You can see the branch K of 29.5 is, is quite large. Let's recalculate um, and, and check the results again. And you can see the branch K is, is back down to a much more, uh, a much more realistic, realistic value.
You also note that some of these are directional components. Uh, in this case, the red dot uh, can be uh, uh, the red dot denotes the, um, the the channel line, or sorry, the branch pipe. In this case, because it's a diverging T, we'll set it to here. And now we can have a look at our results. So you can see there is a bit of a flow distribution across across these and, and, and a loss of um, a loss of pressure as we go through the system we can see that there's a, a duty pressure rise required of 1.1 bar um, for for the for the the pump uh, and we can also see that the, the pressures that that are de being delivered often obviously you need to supply a minimum pressure to these uh, nozzles um, and and we can use fluid flow 3 to to calculate that and examine it so that's how fluid flow deals with uh, uh, sprinklers Another component that's specific to fire systems with different fluid flow 3 is the fire hydrant model, a fire hydrant component. And I'm just going to open up another model here so we can have a look at how, how fluid flow 3 deals with this. So this is a typical model of a, of a localized uh, fire hydrant. We have the water main connection, again modeled as a as a known, uh, a known pressure at, at 4 bar G, which is a, a suppose on the higher end of, of a, a typical water main. We have an isolating gate valve. Um, from the connection to allow us to, to isolate the uh, the downstream equipment uh, and we have our our fire hydrant model in, in this area here so we have the lower barrel which is modeled as a as a short pipe a two meter high, uh, long pipe uh, eight inch then we have our, our fire hydrant component which can be found in the valve section uh, and that allows us to specify the, the the friction losses and characteristics through that system. So we have a typical free flowing valve here that is 100% open. Uh, I then modeled the connection as a from from a pipe here, but I've ignored the pressure loss in that because obviously in real life the uh, the hose connections will be connected directly to the the fire hydrant, and we have two fire fire hoses, two two inch fire hoses here in direct connection. So basically. Um, through um, through direct direct use of the of the the fire hydrant where there's no additional uh, pressure being generated and we've also got a larger line here for the pumper uh, which is which is obviously when a fire truck comes up and connects to the the fire hydrant and uses onboard equipment to to generate that flow and I've modeled that as a known demand of a thousand US gallons per minute. So when when we calculate, you can see um, the the flow rates are generated here. We've got a flow through the through the um, the fire hydrant of 1,319 US gallons per minute. Obviously, a thousand of that is driven from here, uh, and the rest of the flow goes to to the the, um, the fire hoses. So it gives us an idea of the type of flows we can expect to see um, for different operational um, parameters. We can also have a look in the chart here and see the uh, the friction loss characteristics of the of the um, uh, the fire hydrant, and also, of course, for the uh, for the sprinklers. Uh, we can have a look at how the system performs. For example, if there's no fire truck present at the incident, we can turn this uh, we can turn this element off and recalculate. Uh, and you can see we get a much reduced flow of only 326 US yes, gallons per minute, but more flow does get delivered uh, to those to those direct con direct connected hoses. Uh, we can look at other other operational scenarios. So if there's only one hose being used, for example. Again, we get a different flow distribution, and you can see the pressure pressure drops, friction losses across the valve and, and through through the sprinklers. Uh, and that's how fluid flow three can be used to design fire systems.